and provide the mic for you. Lastly, please share your name and affiliation prior to asking your question. It is now my pleasure to introduce the Vice Chancellor and Director of Athletics at Tennessee, Danny White. Thanks, Bill. Appreciate you guys being here today. Uh, I think I've been on the job for five days, something like that. Uh, it's been a, been, a, been a whirlwind, but uh, proud to be at Tennessee and uh, uh, really excited about really excited about today. I want to welcome Josh and, and you'll meet his, his wonderful family, uh, Don, Hannah, and Jace, who we've rocked their world. They're, uh, uh, I think, uh, in, the, in the same boat now as, as my family and family in transition, but uh, uh, really excited about having you all here uh, as part of the Tennessee family and everything that, that we're excited about building here moving forward. Uh, I want to thank uh, President Randy Boyd and Ch Chancellor Donnie Plowman for their support throughout this search and uh, for, for the last week and uh, couldn't be more excited uh, about uh, the opportunity uh, for me personally to be here in the future uh, of what uh, what we have going for Tennessee athletics and across this this entire institution. Uh, our, our football student athletes were phenomenal. Uh, they, they were really, really great. We have a special uh, want to thank the leadership committee I met with uh, this past weekend. Uh, the insight they gave me and what's happening in our football program was absolutely instrumental in helping me uh, identify the right leader that, that we have here in, in Josh Heupel. Uh, of, of our football program moving forward. Had a great meeting with the team this morning, uh, and I can tell you they're excited. Uh, they're ready to get to work, and, and they're really excited. We had an exhaustive, exhaustive nationwide search. Uh, I know that sounds crazy, because I'm hiring the guy that I've worked with for the last three years. Uh, but uh, if anything, I was trying not to hire the, the head coach from UCF. Uh, and I, I say that with respect to Tennessee, but I love UCF, and I hate that the transition this is causing for, for those student athletes down there. Um, that's that's the hard part uh, of of college athletics, and uh, but uh, uh, after going through extensive candidates, we we left no stone unturned. I, I'd like to thank the candidates. Uh, you'd be amazed if I could ever tell you, and I won't, how many candidates we spoke with, uh, and there were no leaks um, until last night. Uh, only two leaks I've been a part of in my career as an AD, and both of them happened in the last week. So we need, we need to work on that here. Uh, uh, yeah. we got to figure that one out. Uh, that'll be one of my top priorities as we, as we go through here. But I really wanted the student athletes to find out first from me, and, and certainly I, 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 would, I would want that for any group of student athletes, but obviously the student athletes at UCF, that, that, uh, it's a shame that it leaked, but we'll, we'll continue to work on that, tighten, tighten some things up. But... We left no stone unturned. We talked to head coaches. We talked to coordinators. We talked to long-seasoned coaches, uh, talked to young up-and-coming coaches. Uh, character and integrity were extremely important from the jump. Told you guys that last week uh, and will continue to be. I have zero questions about that with this guy. Uh, we want to build a program that we, can all, that we can all be proud of. And after being every single option we had, uh, it, I, I obviously landed with a familiar face. Uh, and Josh Heupel, um, he was our number one option. This job was offered to one person. I know that there's a lot of rhetoric out there uh, uh, that, uh, to the contrary, and that's just not true. Uh, we made one job offer. We got our number one candidate. I couldn't be more proud uh, to, to have uh, Josh as our, our new head, head football coach. Uh, Josh is in it for the right reasons. He's student-athlete centered. That was his message to the team. Uh, this morning we, we filmed a video, so he was able to talk to – his team at UCF in person, and we showed a video that he, he did for our, our team here at Tennessee. Uh, he cares about the kids. I've seen that for three years. He cares deeply about their, their development as students, as people, as athletes. They need to know that. Uh, future recruits need to know that. That's what we're going to be about here at, at Tennessee in all of our sports. Uh, from a fan perspective and a, a, a AD's perspective, it's a pretty fun brand of football. It's one of the, best, the most innovative minds in, in all of college football. I'll talk about some of the statistics uh, that they've accomplished. They've, they've slash weave. I'm kind of in the they we still transition uh, in terms of UCF and what's, what's happened uh, on the offensive side of the ball. Uh, also uh, one of, if not the best, developer of, of young quarterbacks in college football. Uh, his reputation speaks uh, for itself and what he's been able to accomplish 
uh, as, a, as an offensive coach and, and, a, and a developer of, of, of quarterbacks. We want to build the foundation of a program, as I mentioned last week, in all of our sports, but we're talking about football here today, and we want to compete for Southeastern Conference and for national championships. I, I told our student athletes I wouldn't uh, share publicly uh, much of what they shared with me uh, about what was happening in our program for a lot of reasons. We had a great confidential conversation, but I, I think they'll be okay with me sharing with you that uh, some characteristics they're looking for uh, in a head coach. They talked about uh, a little bit of confidence, a little bit of juice, and a little bit of swagger. And uh, that's something that uh, we, we have in spades and they'll, they'll continue to have in, at, at UCF and their football program. And that's something that, that you'll see uh, in Josh Heupel, the staff he'll build here, uh, excuse me, the staff that he'll build here and, uh, and how we carry ourselves as, as a football program. Uh, kids are excited. It's going to be fun. It's going to be exciting. And I think you guys are going to like the brand of football you see. Uh, just some highlights that uh, you could probably read, but I'll, I'll just touch on a couple highlights. At, at UCF for the last three years is the only team in the country only team in the country to rank them, up, rank them up among the top five in total offense for every single year of the last three seasons. It's the only team in the country to average at least 522 yards of total offense in each of the last three seasons. UCF and Alabama are the only two teams to rank among the top eight in the country in passing each of the last two seasons. Along with Alabama and USC, the only three teams in the country to average at least 316 passing yards in the last two seasons. They join Alabama, Clemson, and Oklahoma as the, only, as the only four teams in the country to rank among the top eight in, in scoring in the last three seasons. And finally, they join Alabama and Clemson as the only teams in the country to average at least 42 points per game in each of the last three seasons. It's a pretty good company to be uh, uh, included with from an offensive standpoint. Uh, obviously, there's a lot more to the game than offense. Uh, Josh knows that. Uh, he's going to build a Big time staff. We're excited about supporting him uh, from this day forward uh, to uh, uh, have a, a top notch staff across the board uh, and compete. Uh, and he can speak way better than I can uh, about uh, overall uh, plans in, in terms of uh, team success, not just offense. But I'm hearing a lot of feedback uh, from our fans about uh, uh, they want offense. Uh, I don't know how we could deliver offense more than we just did. Uh, uh, we're, we're going to move the ball and score some points around here. And I couldn't be more excited about it. And uh, I'll share with you, I had I got that same sentiment from the group of student athletes I met with. Uh, and uh, they were pretty jacked up after our meeting this morning. Most importantly, and we're about student athlete success, as I talked about last week, uh, uh, the success of the UCF football team under Josh's leadership was accompanied with unparalleled success in the classroom. Last two semesters, uh, the football program down there uh, had two of the highest GPAs ever, uh, over 3.0. 60% uh, of the roster right now has, is carrying a, a GPA over 3.0 under Josh's leadership. As I mentioned, he does it the right way, uh, encouraging kids to compete in the classroom, compete on the field, and we want to make uh, them the best versions of themselves. Uh, and they have my commitment across all of our sports. We're going to continue to do that. Uh, so without further ado, I'll turn it over to the guy you guys want to hear from today. Uh, and introduce uh, your new head football coach, Josh Heupel. The 27th in the history of Tennessee football. They got the name on there, too. We got it right. <laughs> All right. Uh, what an awesome day for uh, for myself and and our, and our family, and uh, so appreciative of the uh, the warm welcome that we've received, and and uh, just excited to be a part of the Vol Nation, Vol family. I want to thank uh, uh, Chancellor uh, Pluman and President Boyd um, for uh, your vision of what you want and foresee in athletics, the importance that it uh, has uh, on a collegiate campus, and entrusting me uh, and our family, but uh, entrusting us 
uh, to mentor him and uh, teaching these young men uh, the game of life, not just the game of football. To Danny, um, obviously those same sentiments, but um, uh, haven't been around each other for three years, uh, believing in the process that we take our, our kids through and understanding what we're trying to accomplish on the football field. Uh, we want to go chase championships. Uh, we want to be our absolute best. Uh, at the same time, we want to develop them in, in, uh, in life, too, and, and uh, appreciate you guys entrusting us uh, with the care of this program and these young, young men and, and individuals. Um, when I was talking with uh, Chancellor uh, Plowman uh, last night, um, one of the things that just registered with me and made this uh, job opportunity uh, so exciting uh, is the aligned vision between leadership with everybody sitting here today. And we talked about the importance of having a shared common vision uh, being able to work at our purpose uh, to accomplish those things every single day and everybody uh, pulling the rope the same direction. And when you have that in leadership, that's going to transcend through in your entire campus uh, and hopefully throughout our entire state uh, here in, in, uh, in Tennessee. And when you do those things, uh, great things are capable of happening. And obviously, I'm here because we have the opportunity to go chase championships on, on the football field. I also want to take this time to, to thank my wife, Dawn, my co-pilot in, uh, in life. Uh, she's probably piloting most of the time when, uh, when I'm at the office. Uh, my beautiful daughter, Hannah, and my son, Jace, um, they, uh, they woke up to, uh, to a changed world today. They were excited. Uh, there were a few tears maybe at the beginning of the day, but uh, excited once they saw the, uh, the orange tea on the, uh, on the plane. They were ready to jump on top and, or uh, jump in and, and, uh, and get here. Uh, Jace is excited. I was texting with, uh, with Peyton uh, Manning earlier, and uh, he's waiting on uh, uh, counting down the days until he's able to catch a, a ball from him out on the, uh, on the game field. That, uh, that was his first, first ask as we, uh, we got on the plane. So uh, I want to th uh, thank the, uh, the players and the, the staff at, uh, at UCF. Um, last three years have been a tremendous uh, journey, a uh, tremendous ride. I appreciate them uh, allowing me uh, as their coach to be a part of their individual journey and uh, accomplish so many great things. So proud of who and what we were uh, as a program. So excited to see their success this year. Um, just great leadership inside the locker room. And when you have great leadership from within, uh, all things are possible. And, and uh, appreciate each and every one of them. Um, one of the things that, that uh, also registered uh, with me is, is uh, I was talking with the, the leadership here uh, last night on a Zoom call, um, was Danny's conversation with uh, the leadership council on the football team. And the things that uh, they are focused on accomplishing, uh, that's why they came here uh, to one of the biggest and best brands in college football. Um, but uh, the things that they feel like they want uh, to make sure that the locker room uh, that they have inside of the locker room. And at the end of the day, it came down to connection. And that's one of the things that's extremely important to me. Uh, it's been really hard during this past year with COVID, uh, but you play this game. It's a tough, physical, demanding game. You play it because of connection. And there's got to be a sense of belonging, a sense of brotherhood that has to reside inside of that locker room. And to do that, you got to spend time with each other. And you have to do things outside of the game. And that's one of the things – uh, that we try to pride ourselves on inside of our program uh, here at, uh, at Tennessee as we move forward uh, is that sen sense of, of uh, connection. And that allows you um, to go chase, uh, chase greatness uh, outside of the game. When you are connected, you have a chance for love. When you have love, you're able to sacrifice for your teammates. And uh, this game is all about sacrifice. And uh, accountability uh, is something that, uh, that we talked about as well and making sure that uh, we're being accountable to, to each other the program, the process, uh, and the people that reside inside of it. Uh, on the offensive side of the football, um, Danny mentioned some of the successes that we have had as, as, a, as a program at UCF and, and throughout my tenure. Uh, we're going to play with tempo here. We're going to be the aggressor. We're going to play with our skilled players out in space. We're going to give them an opportunity to, to push the football down the field. At the same time, if you really watch what we do, we're extremely balanced in our approach as far as run and pass. We want to be physical. We want to dominate the line of scrimmage. Those are all things that are going to translate to, to what we're doing here in, in Knoxville. At the same time, that aggressive mentality that we have on the offensive side of the football is going to carry over to what we're doing on the defensive side of the football as well. We'll be multiple in all fronts, uh, three-man, four-man fronts. We're going to bring pressure. We want to create negative plays. Uh, I think in, in the game of college football, offensively, it's about creating big plays. Defensively, it's about creating ne negative plays and getting people off schedule. You put those two things together, you got a chance 
to have a really successful uh, game plan and ultimately uh, a season. And uh, uh, excited about embarking down that road uh, as we get together uh, as a football program here uh, after this. I think one of the things that's extremely important to, to the lifeblood of any program, but to the lifeblood, lifeblood, lifeblood here at Tennessee is recruiting. And that's one of the great things here is that you have a national name, national logo that allows you to go coast to coast and go attract the biggest, the best, and the brightest. At the same time, the most important thing that we do is lock down our borders. We have to keep kids inside of this state here. Uh, and that's for multiple reasons. and sustain a positive movement through everything that we're doing to create the sustainable change that we need to lock down the borders here uh, with, our, with our recruits. Um, excited about uh, what we're embarking on, excited to, to be a part of um, Ball Nation, uh, excited to do my very best for the state of Tennessee every single day. I promise you that our staff will do the exact same thing. And I promise you that we're going to embark on, on going to become what we're capable of as, fo as a football program day by day and go chase championships and win those championships. With that, I'm going to open it up for some questions. We'll start here in the room. And reminder, please state your name and affiliation. We'll, st we'll start with Jimmy. Uh, Jimmy Himes with uh, Sports Animal in Knoxville. How, how soon do you feel like you need to put together a staff? And will you consider staff members from Central Florida? Uh, we'll we'll consider consider staff members from uh, Central Florida. I will we'll do that. Uh, also, uh, current members on this staff. We'll have a conversation uh, with them here, uh, the members here at, at Tennessee. Uh, it's important that we put together a staff at the right time, that we get the right people, more than it is simply about the urgency of putting that staff together. But yes, we want to do it in a, in a timely fashion. David here in the front. Uh, David, I'm with the Athletic. When you sort of look at this roster right now, what is your message to guys that are, you know, considering going in the portal and, and guys that are already in there? And, and of course, could you could you envision a scenario bringing players from UCF here? I will not recruit players uh, off of a, a roster that I was uh, a part of. Uh, don't believe that's the, the right thing to do. Um, to the current members of this football program and this roster. <clears throat> we need to be a family. We need to act like a family. And everybody's got a different perspective based on their background of what a family is at times. When you sit in front of your, your team and there's 105 guys, you know, in front of you, everybody's got a little bit different perspective. But at the end of the day, a family to me is defined when push comes to shove, that family stays together. Let's stay a family. Let's, let's trust the people that are in place to help you become what you're capable of. You chose this university for the right reasons. And I'm saying I have a chance to be an elite football program. The tradition says that it should be. It's our job to get it back to that level. You're going to get an elite education and be in one of the best communities uh, in college football. You walk out inside of that, that, that stadium. <clears throat> I've played here a coach here, I should say. That's, a, that's an electric stadium. There's not a better atmosphere in college football. Cannot wait to walk out to that post-COVID next fall and, uh, and hear Rocky Top being, being played as we're running out. You know, uh, that, I just got goosebumps thinking about it. <clears throat> All those things are still here. Trust me, our leadership, who I'm going to bring, give us a chance right, for our family to become connected. Let's go have fun together. Work hard. But let's have fun together and compete. Jordan. Hi, Josh. Jordan Kramer with WATE TV. With this investigation ongoing into Tennessee football and therefore the outcomes, kind of maybe some penalties that may be handed down, not known at this time, how much did that ultimately factor into your decision? And then because you are here standing here right now, why did it not deter you from this job? Yeah, I had a very frank uh, conversation uh, with every person of leadership uh, about what had transpired. 
um, what their knowledge is, uh, what they believe is going to transpire as far as any, uh, any penalty. Uh, and the reason that I'm standing here today is because I believe in a very, very, very bright future for Tennessee football. I believe um, that uh, there's a minor speed bump that, uh, that we're going through, but the kids that are in our program right now and the kids that are being recruited are all going to have an opportunity to go play and chase championships. Go to Patrick. Patrick Brown with uh, 24-7 Sports. Josh, you talked a lot about your uh, offensive philosophy. How, how would you kind of describe your background and how uh, your, your schemes and, and the way you've played has, has changed over your years at Oklahoma, Utah State, Missouri, and, and at UCF? Yeah, at the end of the day, you become a culmination of everything that you, you, you've done. But you really do change year to year based on what your personnel is. That, that's who your quarterback is, what your skill set is there. Who are the skill players around him, uh, whether you're going to play in you know, three wide receiver sets, four wide receiver sets, or you're going to be in two tight end sets. Uh, we've played in all of those things. Um, it comes down to always looking at, and this is, I think it's critical on the offense side of the ball, but it's the same thing I'm going to talk to our, our defense staff and our special team staff about, is don't look at what kids can't do look at what they can do at a high level and put them in a position of success. That is a coach's job that, you know, understand who your players are and put them in a position of success. And so uh, we'll base what we do offensively as far as our personnel groupings and some of the subtle schemes based on what our personnel is, but it's grown and changed throughout the years for sure. Blake in the back. Hey, Josh, Blake Topmeyer, Knoxville News Sentinel. Kind of a, a follow-up to that question. Um, your, your scheme is, is obviously a fair bit different than, than what Tennessee was doing. How do you go about establishing that, that new system in, in one offseason? And then uh, specifically with the staff, is, is Kevin Steele someone you would, would like to keep on, on the staff going forward? I'm going to have a conversation with everybody that's, uh, that's on staff. Uh, I'll touch on that question first. Um, uh, I think that's important. Um, the uh, the first question was uh, the temple portion yeah. of how you install it. In installing your scheme in one off season. Yeah, you, well, we've done it successfully multiple times, different places that I've been. Uh, your coaches have to get caught up to speed on what you're doing if they haven't been inside of the system. You got to coach your coaches, and then your coaches got to put in time with your players. And and um, there's only one way to get to where you need to be, and that's time, effort, and energy, right? And our players um, have to be willing to go above and beyond to, to get where we need to be. Uh, we will be able to get there, no question in my mind, um, you know, as we get into spring ball uh, through summer workouts. And by the time we get to, to the end of training camp, we'll be in a good position by the time we hit the ground in the fall. We'll take some virtual questions. We'll start with Dennis Dodd, CBS. Hey, Josh, congratulations. Um, I, I wonder, big picture, if you could just, uh, in retrospect, what did the firing at, at Oklahoma in 14 mean to you and mean to your career? Uh, give me a chance in, in some ways, uh, Dennis, just to kind of restart and relook at what I wanted to do on the offensive side of the football. And, and uh, as a coordinator, uh, you're always going to try to uh, carry out your head coach's vision. Um, there were a lot of things we did successfully. I think we were top 10 in the country in, in, uh, in offense that year, playing with a freshman quarterback um, and that maybe started, you know, last two thirds of the season, uh, ran into a buzzsaw in a bowl game against a really good uh, Clemson football team. Um, but uh, it gave me an opportunity just to, to reshift my focus on what I wanted to, to be as far as an identity on the offensive side of football. Great, thanks. We'll go to Mike Wilson virtually. Yeah, hey, Josh. Mike Wilson from the Knoxville News Sentinel. I'm just curious what the, the challenges are of being hired in late January um, opposed to, to coming in, you know, typically in, in November as a new hire. So what challenges do you expect with signing day coming up fast and spring football coming up fast? Yeah, the toughest part is, is getting a, a hold on what your roster actually is, what are the needs, and – um, you know, signing day being as close as it is, uh, are those vacancies that you want to fill? Uh, do you want to hold them? It's a different landscape now, too, because of, of uh, the transfer portal. And we talked about that uh, as far as our own roster here. Uh, but junior college football uh, is taking place this spring as well. Um, so as you get through spring ball, um, you potentially are going to need to to fill some spots on your roster uh, at that time as well. It's a little bit different cycle, unique than what it has been in the past. 
one more question virtually. Mike Bianchi. Yeah, Coach, Mike Bianchi, Orlando Sentinel. I'm wondering, uh, you talked about the football team as a family. Well, the family down here lost their, the head of the family. How did your players handle it? Were you able to talk to them? And also, um, is being able to compete for championships at the highest level, did that have anything to do with your decision? I uh, got an opportunity to, to talk with our football team uh, in Orlando uh, this morning. Uh, it was important to me uh, that we did that. Uh, at the same time, uh, created a, a video message for um, our new football team here in, in, uh, in Knoxville. And uh, they were able to simultaneously, as I was having that conversation with them, uh, receive a message from me. Um, what I saw is the, the future of, of, uh, of Tennessee football and things that are important inside of our, our culture. Um, I do, I, I love the players in, in Orlando. Uh, it was a hard morning. I said that about um, my kids when they found out that, that their home was going to change. They're excited now, too. Uh, but that was a tough conversation because you, you care deeply about uh, the people that you're, you're pouring a lot of time and energy uh, into, as we did. Um, I think um, for my family and I coming here, it's because we believe um, in this university. We believe in this football program. We believe in the leadership uh, that we have here in place, uh, and it's clearly aligned. And uh, there's a direct um, correlation to uh, that alignment and the ability for me to go do my job at the, at the highest level. We'll come back to the room here, to the middle, and Brent. Brent Hobbs, VolQuest.com. Two questions. What did you learn in the two years at Missouri about the SEC and kind of how you have to play football here? Is it any different than at UCF or anywhere else? And two, how do you feel like you've grown the last three years the most as a head coach, CEO, leader of a program beyond just being a play call? Yeah, I, I think your communication skills and, and how clear your communication has to be, not with your football coaches, but with every support uh, staff group that, that interacts with your players to give them the best opportunity to, to be successful. I, I think that's um, the number one thing is I've looked back on the last three years that uh, um, I'm in a better place today than I was was before. Um, and. Uh, um, your initial question was what did the SEC. First right? the SEC about yeah. Well, I think the, the line of scrimmage in, in this league is, is different than, than it is in, in other leagues, right? So you got to do a great job of, of recruiting, developing those guys. Uh, that size, strength matters up front. Uh, you got to do a great job. You're going to face uh, elite pass rushers in this league, and so you got to do a great job of, of protecting uh, your quarterback as well, and just from an offensive standpoint. But I think the line of scrimmage is, is the biggest difference. To coach as far right, Trey. Uh, Trey Wallace, Fox Sports, Knoxville. Your relationship with Danny and, and the years that you've spent with him, did was there ever a, a thought process in, in your mind that when he took the job here, maybe somehow you ended up in Knoxville? And, and what have you learned from Danny and y'all's relationship over the last few years that you think you can bring here to Knoxville to better this institution? Yeah, uh, when uh, Danny got the job, uh, was disappointed that uh, it wasn't going to be there anymore. Uh, we had a conversation after it went public and uh, wished him well. And, and that was really the end of that, that conversation. Didn't think about uh, this opportunity uh, in that way. And I think as a football coach, you're typically just living in the environment that you're in. You're so encapsulated in that. Uh, that's your sole focus that uh, you don't think outside uh, of those things. I think for Danny and I, there, there's, for me, and I don't want to speak for him, but there's, there's great comfort in, in coming here and knowing exactly what you're getting out of the leader that you deal with the, the most. There's a clear vision of what he wants for the student athlete experience, which is extremely important, and a clear vision of what he wants as an athletic department as a whole. And uh, there's a lot of entities inside of our, our, our program here that are doing extremely well. You look at our basketball programs. Uh, it's my job to make sure that we're getting this uh, built to, to the – to the level where we can go chase championships every year too. Up front here to Rick. Trey kind of asked the same question I was going to ask, but first of all, welcome to town and to you, you and your family. And uh, uh, Rick Russo, by the way, WVLT News. But yeah, is there a sense of comfortability for you knowing that Danny is here and and the, the the big vision for you for UT football, sustained success? Talk about that and 
how important that is to you? Yeah, we had a conversation. Um, what are we looking for and how are we trying to, to, to build this? And um, it's a, it's a long-term vision, right? I believe that we can have immediate success as well. We got really good players inside of that locker room. You know, I've, I've watched a little bit of tape. Uh, or I've seen them in recruiting. There's good players in there. Uh, it's our job as a coaching staff to get them ready to, to go play their absolute best and go compete every Saturday. Um, you know, so, uh, but at the same time, there's a long-term vision of, of what we're trying to build here uh, for sustainable success and um, uh, a clear vision of, of how we're trying to do that. One more question in the room here, and then we'll go back virtually. David. Hey, Coach, David Shealy with WBIR. Danny talked about how you're a great developer of young quarterbacks. What qualities does a quarterback need to have to be successful in your system? We've had different guys play uh, with a different skill set. Um, we've had, uh, I mean, just going back through my tenure, we, we've had guys that were pure pocket guys um, to uh, guys that uh, have been able to use their feet uh, in the run game in design runs uh, or reading pressures off the edge. Um, use a feet as, as a weapon in, in scrambles. Uh, and we've had guys that have fallen somewhere in between. Uh, we've had, you know, six, three guys, and we've had you know, five, ten uh, the last couple of years at, at UCF. Um, it's about the makeup and the guy inside as much as it is anything. You know, how, how competitive are they? are they? You know, I think that's extremely important. It drives them every day. Um, what is their ability to react and respond? Uh, to adverse situations? Uh, can they wipe the slate clean from the previous play? Uh, can they handle all the noise and all the pressure uh, that's going on around them, not just on game day, but in everyday life as they walk through campus? Uh, can they meet uh, the expectations and the work habits that you have to have? So uh, all of those little things add up to, to a guy playing at a, a championship level at that, that position. I mean, if you're going to chase championships, you better have a championship quarterback. Back to the screen in the back, David Pascal. Josh, congratulations. David Pascal down here at Chattanooga Times Free Press. For those of us that obviously didn't follow you every day at UCF, you look at that 28 and 8 record. I know you were 22 and 4 those first two years and 6 and 4 this past year. There were obviously external factors that everybody had to deal with in college football, but why did this last team not quite have that resounding success that your first two teams did? Yeah. Uh... All of our games, except for one loss, were uh, one possession games, uh, really tight ball games. Um, this past year, and everybody in America was dealing with it. COVID was a, a unique uh, situation unto itself, and how you brought your football team back, uh, what were their workouts while they were away from you, when did you actually get your entire team back, what did your practice habits look like. Um, you know, For us, we didn't meet until uh, the fourth game of the season, I think, as far as being in a full team meeting uh, that wasn't virtual. Um, we lost some close ones, um, and uh, I think you look at the beginning of the season, I think we had close to 10 opt-outs, uh, and all those came because of different reasons and different challenges that they faced uh, in their backgrounds. You know, some of them might be uh, a parent that uh, was, uh, was ill. Some of them had young children, uh, just different backgrounds. And, and uh, as the season wore, wore on, I thought we got thinner as a football team and, and uh, lost a couple of close ones to some good football teams. Two more questions for Coach. We'll go to Austin Price. Coach Austin Price, BallQuest.com. Every coach that's sit up here the last 12 years or so, every time they've had a coaching change, has talked about closing the borders. How important is it more so just to make sure Tennessee is a focus more so? Because, I mean, kids are going to leave the state. It's impossible to sign up 25 kids from one state. So how important is it just to more make this a focus than it is necessarily close the borders? And then, two, how much will you reach out as, a, as an alum of Oklahoma? How much will you reach out to the alums of Tennessee, the former football players that may you may know through crossing paths with over the years to make sure they feel like, hey, you guys have always are welcome here. The door is always open to come to practice, to come do all those type things. Uh, if you play football here, uh, you're welcome back here. I don't care if that's spring practice. I don't care if it's observing a, a workout. I want you guys around. Uh, I want them around our football program. It's important to me. Uh, I hope. Uh, you know, when we get back to having spring games, uh, I'm assuming that there's a, an event that surrounds that weekend, um, you know, for, for former players that uh, are golfing the outing, um, you know, coming to the game. Um, I want guys here, uh, guys that are currently playing. Uh, hopefully they come back and they're working out here during the offseason. Uh, those are all things that I think are important. Uh, they give back uh, to, to the players that are here, you know. And uh, so hopefully uh, that does happen. Will I reach out to them? Absolutely. Um, 
uh, your first question was uh, the recruiting uh, question, right? On, just on, making it a focus, order. not necessarily closing the borders, yeah. but making it to see the big focus. Yeah, I didn't know that everyone had sat up here and said close the borders, but I, I, I do believe, like, I, I'd like to close the borders, right? Not let any of them out. Uh, is it going to be a focus? It absolutely will be a focus for us. For us. Uh, that's the challenge for, for myself, for our coaching staff, uh, to make contact with those guys and, and make sure they understand uh, the importance uh, that they have inside of our program and the opportunity that they have inside of our program, too. And, and you know, is day, today being day one for, for me, right? Um, you know, giving them a clear vision of what we anticipate this looking like uh, when you're here. One more question for Coach Wes Rucker. Hey, Josh, I know that, um, you know, the Tennessee program historically, I think maybe one of the 10 or so winningest programs in, in major college history, uh, but hadn't for maybe 12, 13 years now, hadn't been a consistent winner. D did you have to, to maybe call some colleagues, some friends across the country to make sure that they still believed you, you could win big at a place like this, or was that not a, a factor in your mind? I, I think all the elements to, to win here are here. Um, you are the biggest show, right? Uh, you walk out in that stadium and there's a hundred plus thousand fans inside the stadium. Your facilities um, are, are as good as there are uh, in the entire country. Um, you're going to get a world-class education. So, a lot of the infrastructure that you need to be successful is absolutely here. Now it's about putting the right people in place uh, to reach uh, our young people uh, so that we can have sustainable success here. And certainly believe that. Uh, having competed against them uh, in the past, having watched them from afar, having talked to coaches that have been inside of this program in recent history. Thank you very much, Coach. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks, guys.